What does it take to make a billion user product work in every corner of the world? For Google, the answer isn't just cutting edge tech, it's something far more human, and that is localization. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, let's find out how Google nailed local success in India using an out-of-the-box, real-world UX research that rewrote their playbook. Back in the 2008, Google Maps was launched in India with the same interface and experience as in the US or Europe. But something didn't click. Indian users weren't relying on street names or postal codes. In fact, many roads didn't even have names. So using the Google Maps, when a direction is asked, it looked like this. This is the time when GPS-based phones were not available like in today. So unless you carry a compass, the Google Maps were useless in India back in 2008. Actual challenge was far more beyond the theory. In India, many roads didn't have names or had multiple names. People often navigated using local landmarks, temples, shops, or even trees. If someone looked for the direction for a chai tea shop, the directions were a mess. Google Maps was giving directions no one could follow. The UX just didn't fit. So what did Google do? Google bet on the real-world UX improvement rather than lab experiments. Two of their UX researchers, Olga and Janet, boarded a plane to India to crack the problem. Olga and Janet started studying how people navigate in India. They quickly realized that navigation using landmarks are the main method in India. They creatively found ways to understand the thinking behind the navigation. They called local shops and asked for directions. They asked people to draw routes to familiar places, followed people when they navigated to unfamiliar places. With the above, they got an understanding on how to use landmarks for navigation. They also got an understanding on which landmarks are to be used for navigation. Later, they shared the early drawings of the landmark-based navigation and asked the feedback from the Indian people. They also recruited people to give direction and remember them and later get the feedback from them. This was they were able to lay the building block for the landmark-based navigation through a research done on an out-of-the-box, scrappy way. It was simple and deeply human dot, but creative to the depth that could solve the issue Google faced. Through their research, they found that people use landmark-based navigation in four different methods. Orientation, head towards Yellow Temple. Description of a turn, turn right just after the Rani's masala shop. Confirmation of the path. You will see an IOC petrol shed on the right. Error correction. If you are near the railway station, you have gone too far. Olga and Janet's ethnographic-based research stood up against a potential failure of Google Maps in India and transformed it to a great navigational product. And whenever they had street names, they included that as well. Things have changed today with location-aware mobile phones and cheap mobile data. This enabled better way to provide navigation. But at a time almost 17 years ago where above sophisticated technologies were not affordable, the landmark-based navigation bridge the gap of time. This story shows two powerful truths. One, global success need local empathy. You can't copy-paste UX. Two, think out of the box and hit the ground. So the next time you think about product design, ask, are you ready to think local? Are you ready to get scrappy? because that's how Google turned a broken UX into a win in India. If you like this story, subscribe for more weekend deep dives into how tech giants solve real-world problems.